back in May, PlayStation held one of their state of plays where they gave us the first look at a game that would take a hold of the gaming industry. A game that would captivate players with its amazing world, fun gameplay, charming art style, and outstanding presentation. That game is not Concord as it was dead on arrival. And what a day to go offline because what really deserves all the praise is Astrobot. A new 3D platformer from Team Asobi starring Astro and friends on a brand new adventure across the stars. Taking the bite-sized packing game Astro's Playroom and going bigger and better in every department. If you haven't played Astro's Playroom, I highly recommend it. I mean, it came free with your PS5 so there's no harm in trying it out. Plus if you enjoy it then you'll know right away if you'll enjoy Astrobot. And when the PS5 first came out and I only had Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and Astro's Playroom to play, honestly, I remember having more fun with Astro exploring the multiple areas within the new PlayStation. So when PlayStation dropped a short reveal trailer at the end of their presentation with a release date and everything, sign me up, September couldn't come any sooner. Now with the game released and taking over the internet, yep, this game is simply amazing. From its gameplay, music, presentation, the multiple aspects it utilizes the PS5 hardware, makes it one of the best game releases this year. Immediately starting up the game, we get straight into the plot where Astro and company are traveling space in their PS5 ship, when suddenly a giant green alien named Nebulax appears, stealing the PS5 CPU and escaping leading to the ship crashing on a deserted planet and its components along with Astro's crew being scattered across the neighboring galaxies. After recovering from the crash, it's up to Astro to find his friends, reclaim the pieces of his ship, and save the CPU from Nebulax. What the game shows off immediately is its charm. From the title screen having PS1 memory cards for save slots, to the beautiful opening cinematic leading into the first level, you can tell that this game is going to be a chill, fun adventure all throughout its runtime. And once you set off from the crash site, you'll traverse the galaxies one after another, jumping and hovering areas like ancient ruins and construction sites one second, to a flashy casino and a world made entirely of sweets the next. And all of them are jam-packed with secrets hidden around every corner. There wasn't a single level I disliked, as each one provided something unique to stand out. Whether it was a platforming challenge, a puzzle for collectible, or one of the new abilities Astro can use during his journey. Being able to float high in the air to reach far off places, a dog companion that will have you blast down walls, slowing down time for new platforming opportunities, and even one where you shrink to the size of a mouse to see the stage at a whole new point of view. Not to mention, there's even more power-ups you can just grab in stages like a rubber duck to create platforms on lava and a magnet to make throwable objects out of junk around you. It can be exciting to see what the next level will bring to the table, and with 50 plus planets to explore, there's a lot to see. And one of the best aspects of Astrobot is how it utilizes every feature the DualSense has available. Hearing and feeling Astro's footsteps through the controller is cool, but feeling the effect change based on him walking on sand or metal is such a nice touch. You'll also use the controller's vibrations to find panels to open a door, feel the haptic feedback as you punch with a set of frog gloves, or using the boost on your ship as you travel across the map. The gyroscope is utilized in ways like extending a monkey's arm to reach handles, steering your ship, even to freely move items like the missing PlayStation components and unlockables you earned. All of these features add another touch of immersion you don't see many PS5 games use to this degree. Probably not since Astro's Playroom, honestly. Side note, smart on PlayStation to make a physical controller based on Astro's ship. This thing is awesome. Now, when it comes to objectives within stages, there's really only two tasks, finding the bots and reach the end. And with over 300 of them lost in space, you got your work cut out for you. Some of them will be out in plain sight, others may have you look around the environment. And once you save them, they'll be kept nice and safe in your controller, free to be thrown in the air at your whim. Now, what many players will get a thrill from saving bots are finding the VIP variants referencing countless gaming series, both PlayStation IPs and third-party ones. 
You have old school series like Crash, Ape Escape, Metal Gear Solid, and more recent ones like God of War, Returnal, and Persona. Whether the series is still going strong today or hasn't been touched in decades, finding one and seeing who is represented here is such a joy. Shout out to the Klonoa fans out there. Never played the games, but I've been meaning to. Also shout out to Gravity Rush. Best Vita game, no discussion. Along with being a fun callback to other series, a lucky few will actually be given a dedicated level, even adding mechanics to better represent them. I won't say which lucky games got this treatment outside of God of War Ragnarok since the trailer already showed it, but running around with the Leviathan Axe, freezing enemies, throwing it at Odin's ravens and platforms to solve puzzles creates a unique level that is entertaining while also respecting the IP itself. Outside of bots to rescue, two other things you'll need to look out for are numerous puzzle pieces and possible secret exits. The puzzle pieces work the same as the bots, either they're visible immediately or require some thinking to locate, and once found it will be used to unlock additional features back at the crash site. The secret exits are by far more rewarding to find in my opinion, as specific levels will have one hidden that when found will unlock an entirely new stage to play within the lost galaxy. Keeping an eye out for something out of place and putting the pieces together to discover the exit is such an awesome feeling. And even though you'll have to return to the current stage again after playing the secret level, the game has the courtesy of not requiring you to complete the stage entirely to obtain the remaining bots and puzzle pieces. Once you've found everything, simply back out and that's it. Stage done. And if there's a situation where you're having trouble finding collectibles, there is this little bird to help guide you along the way. I never used it, but it's there if you need it. Another useful tool to utilize in Astrobot are those game cards that can just flat out tell you where a collectible is if all else fails. More games really should utilize this feature. As you progress more through the story, the crash site becomes more livelier with the rescue bots chilling around, along with facilities unlocked via the puzzle pieces you found you'll be able to change the design of Astro's controller, don an outfit based on another Sony IP, take pictures with the animals seen throughout the levels, and the best part, spending your savings on a capsule machine. Throughout the stages, you'll be collecting coins that are used to earn rewards from this machine. You can get new outfits for Astro, ship designs, and see more from the VIP bots you rescued as each one has a unique animation that they'll do outside. Crash will do his iconic dance, Daxter will knock some sense into Jack, Laura Croft will be running from a T-Rex all around the PS5. You'll get a good laugh at what these little guys will be doing. Even though these references are cool to see, I can imagine some people could see this as simple member berry moments, feeding off people's nostalgia for these IPs, and yeah, I can see what they mean. Finding a standard bot isn't as cool compared to finding Aegis from Persona 3 or Cat and Raven from Gravity Rush. But the thing is, the game would still be fun even without these VIP bots included. This is an amazing 3D platformer with all the abilities I mentioned and the countless ones I haven't. You'll be playing this haunted level where you use a light to find platforms and suddenly see a cameo from Medieval in the middle which will make longtime fans happy. But if you don't know what Medieval is, the stage is still great regardless. While the majority of the game isn't difficult, leaning more to the cozy chill side of platformers, there are a couple special stages that'll have you die countless times before reaching the end. And with no checkpoints, it only makes reaching the end even sweeter. The bosses, while not as hard as those special stages, will have you fighting foes like a giant octopus with boxing gloves, and you'll have to use a given power-up to take him down. Whether in a standard stage or the big bad at the end of the current galaxy, the bosses add a fun spectacle in between the calmer moments in the adventure. The music is also a standout, with plenty of catchy tunes to listen to, and the dedicated levels for series having amazing remix tracks to go with it. Not to mention the little touches like the sound of a bot in danger to indicate whether they're nearby or not. Performance is also perfect here, fast load times, smooth frame rate, and such beautiful, colorful environments to see. 
It's nothing groundbreaking or pushing the PS5 to its limits. It just has a pleasing aesthetic with multiple environments that each stand apart from one another. You'll have these slot machines to mess around with in a casino, relaxing hot springs to take a dip in, and if you're not smacking every little thing you see, you're not experiencing everything this game has to offer. And without any crashes or glitches throughout my run, nothing is going to take you out of this experience. It's not an extremely long game to complete, ranging from 10 to 15 hours to 100% based on a person's skill level and how many bots they need to go back for. But Astrobot is simply an outstanding platformer for PlayStation and platformers in general. If you have a PS5 and you simply want a fun, charming game to experience, you need to pick this game up. Makes me want to play Astrobot Rescue Mission considering I got it for PlayStation Plus a few years back. Keep the fun with Astro going. If you played Astrobot, what did you enjoy about it? Was there a specific stage that was memorable to you? And I have to ask this. Which VIP bot was your favorite? Based on the outfit I was rocking and some of the footage, you know which one I was happy to see. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe for more gaming content, and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you again next time. Bye. If you didn't wear the cat outfit once during your playthrough, you didn't play the game right. I should probably review Gravity Rush one day.